Hey everybody, my name is Joseph Sanfilippo and today we're gonna to go through smart board basics for a variety of interactive flat panels available from smart. Let's take a look at my agenda and begin. So we're gonna discuss the different interactive flat panel models because you may have different ones in your school. We're gonna talk about where you could download the software and drivers that allow you to interact with your interactive flat panel how that you have access to the online version of Smart Learning Suite Online. Then we're gonna discuss, discuss the connectivity and calibration of your smart panel. So to be able to see the display and interact and touch with your panel. We're gonna overview the control panels and menu buttons depending on where they are and what they can do on the different variety of models. We're gonna get into writing on your smart board or your smart interactive flat panel and specifically using smart ink to customize your ink such as highlighters, magic pen and other tools. How smart ink interacts with non-smart resources so like Google Earth, the web browser or things like that. And then we're lastly gonna discuss quickly on how you can use your smart interactive flat panel without a computer. So there are four models available for your smart interactive flat panel, and that is the 6000 series, the 6000S, which is what I'm on today, the 7000 and the MX series. They're all very similar, just might have some different types of pens, the menu buttons might be in some different locations, and your ports would be in some different locations. So all of the smart panels have multiple ports, such as HDMI, display, and VGA. They uh, support what's called object awareness. That means it knows the difference between your finger to touch the panel and move something around, the pen to write, and your palm as an eraser. And then you also have pen ID available on the 6000, 7000, and 6000 S series, which means you're gonna have two different pens being two different types of tools at the same time. All of these are IQ enabled. That means they have that IQ experience, which is the onboard Android operating system that's built into your panel. And then lastly, they all support Smart Ink. So, to get this to work, you need to install the drivers and software, and it's really just installing Smart Notebook. The drivers needed are for touch and for inking to allow you to touch, use the Smart Ink, and use your pen. And of course, there's the Notebook software, which is that educational software for creating uh, interactive activities with students. You do have a basic free version, a trial version, and with the purchase of your board, you have your subscription. Alongside that, you also have access to Smart Learning Suite Online. This is the online version of Smart Notebook, which allows you to create content, integrate with Google Drive or Microsoft Teams, and provide engaging activities inside and outside of the classroom for students. So as I mentioned, this is the online version of Smart Notebook. This does integrate with Teams and Drive, and you would log in using your smart account at suite.smarttech.com. Com. To use your computer with your smart interactive flat panel, you would need to connect the display as well as the interactivity. So we're going to have Nina take us through how to connect our smart interactive flat panel to our computer. Hi, this is Nina Sclafani with Tech. If you're watching this video, you likely just got a new smart interactive flat panel in your classroom and you're ready to start using it with your students. But before you begin, we need to discuss the two components necessary in order to connect your computer to your smart interactive flat panel. First, to connect to your display, you will need an HDMI cable. This is an HDMI cable. Locate the HDMI port on your computer. Depending on the type of computer you have, you may or may not have an HDMI port. If you don't have an HDMI port, you're going to need an adapter, similar to one of these. Connect to the adapter when needed. Next, we're going to connect our USB cable, which will allow us to interact, touch, and write on our smart interactive flat panel. This is the USB cable. Your computer should have multiple USB ports. 
Now that you've connected your computer to your Smart Interactive Flat Panel, you're ready to get going. If you have any additional questions, feel free to email otis at tech.com. I'm Nina. Have a great day. You're going to want to make yourself familiar with the control panel on the model of Smart Interactive Flat Panel you have. Let's take a look at a few options. So, Depending on your panel where your control beam might be on the bottom left of the screen, such as the 6000 series, along the side with the convenience panel and the 6000S and 7000 series, or along the bottom right, such as the MX series right here. They all have the ability to put the panel into sleep mode, change the input to other things you have plugged into your interactive flat panel, view a menu options, volume and mute, your freeze or pause screen, so it would kind of freeze the screen while you could do something on your computer separately. You do have the ability to get access to the screen shade directly from the 6000S, and you have the home button that brings you to your eyes Q experience on the 6000S, 7000, and MX panels. Next, we're gonna look at using your Smart Interactive Flat Panel as an infinite whiteboard inside of the Smart Notebook software. So here I'm in the Smart Notebook software, and I'm just gonna to click to the next page, where I have a space. So it's just a whiteboard space where I can write notes. Okay. So I just have a whiteboard space that I can zoom in, zoom out, move text around. I do suggest that sometimes it's better to write bigger and then make it smaller, because then it's still legible as opposed to when you write small and try to make it big. I'm gonna get out of full screen here to show that I'm in the Smart Notebook software. Now, when I mean infinite, I mean every time I add a page, I can now write more notes without losing what I wrote on previous pages. So if I click into the page sort in the top left, I can go back to page one, page two, and page three of where I wrote those notes. So of course, any image I set up on my board, I'll be able to write to as well. I'm still in the Smart Notebook software. I'm gonna take a look at my computer and how I can write and change my pens. So as I write here, I have my pen choices across the top. So solve 2x plus 3. So 2x plus 3 equals 11. I'm going to change my pen to be a different color. So I'm going to minus 3 on both sides. Uh, and then so I have 2x equals 8. And again, I'm going to change that color and divide by 2, and divide by 2, and then x equals 4. Four. So I was able to easily change my color knowing that whole time. And if I needed to use my finger or my palm to move content around a race, I could have. One of the most powerful tools for a teacher using a smart interactive flat panel is Smart Ink, which allows you to write over any program inside and outside of Smart Notebook while customizing your pens. Let's take a look on how you can use Smart Ink. So Smart Ink allows you to seamlessly write over any programs on your computer. You have access to a variety of smart tools. You can customize and favorite pens for quick access to things like highlighter, magic pen, and more. You do have the option to use your pen or the hand. It will know the difference of it because of object awareness. So it does recognize your finger as a touch, the pen to write, and your palm to erase. By picking up one of your pens, it'll show the smart ink tool icon. So I see it right there, it's because I picked up the red pen, it's red, and when I select it inside, it displays the menu. So going around the wheel, I have my pen where I can change pen colors. So first on the red pen, and I start writing, you'll see I'm writing on my screen in red. If I change to the green pen, I'm writing in green. And if I do something like become a highlighter, I can become different hot color highlighters automatically. If I click the star here, this is where I could set favorite pens to maybe get some quick access to pens I'm always going to use. So I'm going to press the plus. I'm going to choose pen. Maybe I always want a light blue highlighter. Maybe I'll add another pen. This time I'll do a pen and I want access to a regular pen that is it's a regular pen. It's going to be purplish uh, and it's going to be dashed that ends with an arrow and I'll make it a little thicker. And if I add that as a favorite, you now see I've started to add favorite pens or tools around my icon there. And I do have a purple dotted line pen with an arrow at the end. 
So next I'm going to do is show you how to write over some other programs using Smart Ink. Let's go to my computer and look at the first program, which will be Google Earth. So I'm going to open Google Earth here. And now you just see I'm on my screen and I still have that, I still have that icon on the right side, the floating icon that I can move around and do whatever I want. So I'm going to make sure this goes back to being a plain red pen. And I can write anywhere on my screen. It's right there, so it's not a plain red pen yet. I'm going to put the pen down and pick it back up, and that resets to my plain red pen. So let's go into the toolbox and use one of the tools to insert text from what I write to do a search inside of Google Earth. So I'm going to click the pen and I'm going to go to the toolbox, which I have a variety of tools like um, the screen capture, my magnifier. The one with the letter A in the arrow is my insert text tool. So I'm going to select that and I'm going to write Alaska. And even with my bad handwriting, it'll recognize that I wrote Alaska. I'm going to select the check and it's going to tell me to insert that text. I'm going to touch where I want that text to insert in the search box. And that's going to do a quick search to go to Alaska for me. So the next thing I'm going to do with my red pen is outline Alaska because this is what I can do with Smart Ink. As I write my notes or I annotate, I'm still able to interact with the content behind me. So what do I mean by that? So I'm going to quickly outline Alaska with that red pen. And now that I've outlined it with the pen in my hand or with putting the pen down, I can use my finger to move the content around. So it hasn't frozen my screen and I can kind of do a quick little move over here and show the outline of Alaska is the majority of the continental United States. So now let's use the screen capture tool inside of Smart Ink to save my annotations. So again, I'm going to pick up the pen and I'm going to look at my little toolbar here and I've got the little camera and then the top left corner is where I can do a, an area capture. So we'll choose that. Now with my finger, I'm going to draw a square and now what's ever in that unshaded area, once I let go, it's going to tell me, do I want to send to a new page in Smart Notebook? Do I want to save it on my desktop, choose a location or save, send to my clipboard? Well, let's just send this to a new page in Smart Notebook. And what that has done is made that image part of my Smart Notebook file, but you did see I had my other options there. The next thing I'm going to show you is annotating over a web browser, just to keep talking about how as I interact or I write on my Smart Interactive Flat Panel, I'm still able to interact with other content and my inking belongs to the window that I wrote over. So I'm going to open the Chrome web browser here and I'm on an article and I can just start writing notes on this article. I can move that content around, like that T again, and I could scroll down through the article. If I become something using my, uh, become my highlighter, I can highlight, I can again point things out and my ink stays on this window. So if I open another tab, Notice those notes aren't there, but I can write different notes here and they still remain on whatever tab I'm at. So I'm on one tab in Google Chrome and if I go back to the original tab, my inking is still there. If I do want to use the screen capture toolbar, I could save and collect this ink as well. So all of your smart interactive flat panels have an embedded onboard operating system that's called the IQ. So the IQ experience lets you do a variety of functions and tools without connecting your computer to your interactive flat panel. So as I mentioned, this is using your IFP without a computer. You have things such as a whiteboard and a player that plays things like PowerPoints, PDFs, and smart notebook files. You have access to a Chrome browser to access any internet files or web pages. It also includes the ability to screen share from any device, which will wirelessly show something from an iPad to your interactive flat panel in the front of your room. 
You can add web apps as well as curated apps from Smart's App Store. Now, Smart may have updates over time that adds functionality to your IQ experience, and that will come over the air, so you never need to install or update it manually. It'll automatically update to have the latest and greatest features in this IQ. When I'm on my interactive flat panel, depending on the model, there's multiple ways to get to the IQ experience. There may be a black bar across there that has a little white dash on it is your home button. You could switch inputs to go to the OPS slot. And for the 6000S here, I have a home button right there. As I press, it brings me to my IQ experience. If I want to go back to my computer, I have the input option and I choose the computer that I'm there to switch back to my com computer screen from the IQ experience. And that's everything we have for you today. If you have any questions, feel free to email otis at tech.com. As always, my name is Joseph Sanfilippo, and until next time, good night, Internet.